Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sweta Pedrajasingam, and I am honored to be your MC for the evening. I have been a longtime supporter of the Canadian Tamil Congress, and as a Bharatanatyam dancer for many years, I have performed at various events hosted by CTC, including the annual dinner, Tamil Fest, and several fundraising activities, such as the Toronto Tamil Chair and Harvard Tamil Chair initiatives. On behalf of the Canadian Tamil Congress, I would like to welcome you all to this year's International Women's Day celebration. Today, we all come together to celebrate the contributions and achievements of women to the social, economic, political, and cultural aspects of life. CTC is proud to host this event, and I thank you all for tuning in to celebrate the great accomplishments of women. Before moving to our program, we would like to acknowledge the land we occupy is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, and the, Hodosh the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. The Tamil community has settled in this country in large numbers within the past 35 years. As new settlers, we thank our Indigenous people for preserving these lands, and we are committed to working with all communities in Canada towards truth and reconciliation for our First Nations peoples, which is long overdue. Now, to begin the program for the evening, I would like to introduce Jeremy Nicholas to sing O Canada and Tamil Thai Valtu. Jeremy is a grade 10 vocal student at Cardinal Carter Academy for the Arts and has been studying vocal for the last seven years. Here is Jeremy. <laughs>
வேணும் தன் மனம் வீசி இசை கொண்டு Thank you, Jeremy. That was a beautiful performance. Let us now observe a moment of silence for all those who have lost their lives in search of peace and freedom. We shall also remember those we lost during the COVID-19 pandemic and all those we lost in the recent war in Ukraine. Thank you. Next, to deliver our welcome address, I would like to introduce Christine Sivaratnam. Christine is a long-standing member of the Canadian Tamil Congress, and she is also a former board of director of CTC and continues to be an active member of the Canadian Tamil community. Christine is also a licensed funeral pre-planner. Here is Christine. Thank you, Sureta. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to the International Women's Day celebration hosted by the Canadian Tamil Congress. Since 1911, International Women's Day is celebrated around the world to recognize the importance and significance of women in, women in every person's life. It is the day dedicated to celebrating women's achievements and contributions to political, economical, cultural, and various other fields. It is also a day aimed to raise awareness about women's rights and gender priority. It is a day dedicated, women are the real architect of the society and play various roles every day. They are mothers, sisters, daughters, partners, and today they hold top positions in every field equal to men. There are numerous women frontline workers who made so many sacrifices during COVID pandemic over the last two years. We are thankful for their selfless services and commitment. It is important to show appreciation, respect, and love to all incredible women in our life. It is essential for institutions, organizations, governments, and everyone to do their part in achieving gender equality for sustainable future. As part of our ongoing efforts to achieve these objectives, we at Canadian Tamil Congress have been celebrating International Women's Day and highlighting the contributions and achievements of outstanding individuals within our community with huge enthusiasm. Today, we will also be presenting CTC C Annual Women in Leadership Award to an outstanding individual in recognition of her achievement and contributions. We are very honored that our National Defense Minister, Honorable Anita Anand, will be joining us to deliver keynote address. We will also have the opportunity to hear from four of our panelists how they broke the barriers in their professions and testimonials from another six individuals about their perspectives and important work ahead in achieving gender equality. 
we have also arranged amazing performances ranging from singing, instrumental music, and dance. I'm pleased to welcome all of our speakers and performers today. I also want to thank our Master of Ceremony, our beautiful Sweta Parajasingam, for hosting today's event. Today's event would not have been possible without the support of our sponsor, Sasi Narain, from AGA Beauty Learning Academy and Spa. These are, there are several people who helped to organize today's event, and I want to thank all of them for their hard work and education in organizing today's event. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us virtually. Hopefully, we will be able to celebrate in person next year. I hope all of you enjoy the event and do your part in achieving gender equality in every aspect of human life. Let me conclude my speech with a quote from Serena Williams. The success of every woman should be the inspiration to another. We should raise each other up. Thank you. Monica. Thank you for the welcome address, Christine. Following this address, we have a beautiful Bharatanatyam performance called Enne Gautuam by the students of Srimadhi Venita Kugendran's Kelly Koville Academy of Fine Arts. Thank you again for that stunning performance by the students of Kelly Koville Academy of Fine Arts to Enne Gautua, a composition by Madure Ar Muralidharan. Thank you to our performers, Ashwini Satyamurti, Srina Perinbanadhan, and Maya Juristis. Thank you again. Next, I would like to call up Ravina Rajasingham, the Vice President of the Canadian Tamil Congress to say a few words. Thank you, Shweta. By the way, you look stunning. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and welcome to all the beautiful, hardworking women out there, to all the men who support and encourage our women. Happy International Women's Day. Let this celebration be not only today, but make it every day. Good evening, distinguished guests. With great pleasure, I welcome you all to the Canadian Tamil Congress annual International Women's Day celebration. International Women's Day is a global day dedicated to celebrating the importance and significance of women in every field. It is also to commemorate the, the, their battle for peace, justice, equality, and progress. Imagine a gender equal world a world free of bias, stereotypes, and discrimination. A world that is diverse, equitable, and inclusive. A world where difference is valued and celebrated. That's right, this year's theme is Break the Bias. Together, we can bring forward women's equality by breaking the biases in our community, workplace, school, colleges and universities. Collectively, we can all break the bias for a better future. You will witness from our testimonial speakers and our panelists as to how they broke their biases to become achievers and inspiration to others. CTC takes great pride in women inclusiveness and involvement. CTC has many representatives on the board and advisory team. We are pleased to have increased number of women coming forward to join us in addressing many issues. The steady increase in, is an evidence of our respected core value and our stride for gender equality. At CTC, we strive to embrace, respect, encourage, and motivate all women here and around the globe. We have recognized and, and encouraged and awarded our women achievers for International Women's Day, as well as at our annual Taipungal dinner. We also have provided opportunity for our women to take a leadership position and showcase their talent. We look forward 
to of avenues to support them in all aspects, especially to a very own woman affected by the civil war who are deprived of necessities. Respecting COVID protocols, CTC organized women's social consisted of dinner and bowling. It was not only a fun evening, but a reflection, sharing and empowering each other. CTC is proud to have created a number of platforms for our women focusing on strengthening the capacity of a woman and mobilizing knowledge and sharing best practices. We love to have you all join us. In addressing strengthening the capacity of a woman, Canadian Tamil Congress sees the need in our community to support those who have battled and survived cancer. Dr. Gayatri Naganathan, general surgery resident physician with an interest in breast surgical oncology and I initiated and are pleased to announce today the launch of Puduir, Tamil Community Cancer Support Group. We want to create a safe, secure and confidential environment for those who have endured and survived cancer to come together to support each other. We know it's not easy. Support from each other goes a long way. In tandem with this group, we will also conduct awareness raising seminars throughout the year on various health related topics, such as cancer screening programs, nutritional support while battling cancer and genetic testing related to cancer syndromes. Although this is an umbrella support group, we have specific sessions for each type of cancer, specifically for women related cancers. If you or anyone you know would like to attend our first gathering, please register by filling out the Google form or email us at p-u-t-h-u-y-i-c-i-r-c-a at gmail.com. Even, even if I forget uh, to mention the uh, Google form, this information can be found on CTC Facebook. Last but not least, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Ukraine during this difficult time. Tamil people have faced a similar horrific experience not too long ago. We call to action for accelerating both parties to negotiate and to come to a solution. We also encourage all women to get involved with CTC to make a difference. I like to leave you all with a challenge, whether it's a college friend, mother, grandmother, sister, daughter, or girlfriend, speak words of encouragement by making a phone call or by sending a text today to an important woman in your life to show solidarity. Let them know how much you respect and appreciate them. You can share this with us on CTC Facebook as well. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ravina Rajasingham, for sharing a few words with us and for launching this amazing initiative here today. Moving on, as you all know, whether in person or virtual, financial support is required to carry out an event successfully. And at this time, we have a message from our event sponsor, Sessie Netting. CEO of AGA Beauty Learning Academy and Spa. Let's take a look. Monica. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. International Women's Day is celebrated to acknowledge and recognize outstanding contributions of women to society. As a woman entrepreneur, I am very happy to support the International Women Day celebration hosted by the Canadian Tamil Congress. I would also like to congratulate the organizers of today's event for recognizing the importance of gender equality and for their hard work in hosting today's event. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today and enjoy the evening. Thank you.
Thank you, Sasi Nerin, for sharing a few words with us. And on behalf of the Canadian Tamil Congress, we thank you again for your support. Up next, we have a singing performance from Sneha Raghavan. Sneha has been singing since the age of three and aspires to grow her passion for music through her Instagram page at Sneha underscore sings. Hope you all enjoy this performance. Thank you, Sneha. That was a fantastic performance, and I'm sure everyone watching enjoyed watching the enthusiasm in your performance as much as I did. I would now like to welcome Kumudini Tavaraj to introduce our keynote speaker. Mrs. Tavaraj works for a large health not-for-profit organization and has been a long-standing member of the Canadian Tamil Congress and a strong supporter of many of CTC's initiatives. Please welcome Kumudini Tavaraj. Thank you, Sweta. My name is Kumudini, and it is my pleasure to introduce you today to our keynote speaker. The Honorable Anita Arnand, Canada's Minister of Defence, was first elected as the Member of Parliament of Oakville in 2019. She previously served as Minister of Public Services and Procurement. She has lived in Ontario since 1985, though she was born and raised in rural Nova Scotia. Minister Arnand has worked as a scholar, lawyer, and researcher. She has too many accomplishments for me to address them all today, but prior to her career as a member of parliament, she was a legal academic, 
including most recently as a professor of law at the University of Toronto, where she held the J.R. Kimber Chair in Investor Protection and Corporate Governance. She has also taught law at Yale, Queens, and Western. In 2019, the Royal Society of Canada awarded her a medal for outstanding contributions in governance relating to private and public organizations. In 2019, she was appointed in the Government of Ontario Expert Committee to consider financial advisory and financial planning policy alternatives. Please join me in welcoming to the Canadian Tamil Congress International Women's Day, Minister of National Defence, the Honourable Anita Anand. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, Kumudini and Vanakam. I want to begin by acknowledging that I am joining you from the traditional territory of many nations, including the peoples of the Anishinaabek, the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We aren't able to come together in person as we normally would, but I want to say that I am very much looking forward to joining you all in person when we can and to sharing some wonderful South Indian food with you. I also want to take my hat off to the Bharatanatyam dancers. I do myself dance Bharatanatyam and I danced at my sister's wedding many years ago. And I was very nostalgic when I was seeing those beautiful dancers. And Ravina, Putir and Sneha, wonderful, wonderful to hear from you this evening as well. I am so excited to join celebrations such as this, where we celebrate women in all their diversity who can make a lasting impact on our country and our world. It is not only on International Women's Day that we should recognize the accomplishments of women in all sectors and cultures. It is actually every day and perhaps one day we won't need an International Women's Day because it will be clear that women themselves are incredible every single day of the year. My background as uh, was pointed out is in governance and ethics. And these are issues that are so very important to us all and certainly in government and the people we elect. And I would like to just chat a little bit now about how my work in academia prior to being elected in 2019, which seems like a very short time ago, even though so much has happened uh, since my election in 2019, um, what, what, what should we be doing in government? I believe that as elected officials, we have a duty to continue to build the Canada that we all want, a caring, compassionate and prosperous society where no one is left behind. And I am proud to be part of a government that shares these objectives. We are facing security challenges at the current time. And in my portfolio as the Minister of National Defense, one of the things that we focus on is how do we reconstitute the Canadian Armed Forces? How do we encourage more Canadians to want to wear the uniform of the Canadian Armed Forces under General Wayne Eyre's leadership as the Chief of Defence Staff, our Canadian Armed Forces are prioritizing recruitment, retention, and reconstitution. What am I doing as Minister? I'm supporting that process. I want the Canadian Armed Forces to be an institution where everyone feels welcome, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, and any other characteristic. The Canadian Armed Forces should look like Canada. It should represent us all. 
And in that vein, I met recently again with the members of the Minister's Advisory Panel on Systemic Racism and Discrimination to receive their final report about how we can build a more inclusive institution, an institution that welcomes everyone, that attracts talent from all segments of Canadian society, and that looks like Canada itself. And in that vein, we are proud to be expanding the reach and the mandate of the Sexual Misconduct Response Center, led by Dr. Denise Preston, where Canadian Armed Forces members and Department of National Defense employees can go for confidential support and professional counseling. And then finally, in terms of what we're doing at the Department of National Defense, I announced last November that I accept in full the recommendation of Justice Louise Arbour to refer the investigation and prosecution of military sexual offenses to the civilian justice system. And so we are modernizing the military justice system by fully implementing these types of reforms, including the Declaration of Victims' Rights. Throughout this process, I am committed to diversity, I am committed to inclusion, I am committed to openness, to transparency, and to frequent updates to the public. And I encourage you all to visit our online culture change progress tracker to learn more about what steps we are taking. And as I said, I believe that the institutions that comprise our country should similarly reflect the diversity of our country. And that's in fact why, or at least one of the reasons why I ran for public office is that I looked across the House of Commons and I said, I don't see anybody that looks like me. I don't see many people anyway. And I think that our elected bodies like the House of Commons should in fact reflect the diversity of our country. And what is necessary in this process is for equality and diversity and inclusion to be the responsibility of each and every one of us in our daily lives, whether we are in government, in the medical field, in the education field, um, whether we are young, whether we are not so young, we all have a role to play. And I hope that this is the beginning of many conversations that we will have together about how we can shape this country and how we can play a role together in doing so. Building an inclusive and diverse society is important because we know that when women succeed, everyone will benefit. And these are the ideas and the values that brought me to politics and being of service to my communities in Oakville, in Canada, in the House of Commons, and the broader global framework is part of my commitment to diversity and inclusion. And no matter how difficult our global situation is today um, and the past few weeks have been so difficult in terms of the situation in Ukraine. The issues of inclusion and diversity never leave my mind because those are the long-term issues that we have to continue to work on as a country. And I believe that here in the Tamil community, we all have a role to play. As many of you know, my father is Tamil and my mother is Punjabi. And so we grew up with the best of both worlds. I am so honored that you would invite me here to provide these brief remarks. And as I said, I look forward to seeing you again in person and to being with you and hearing about your experiences and your views relating to International Women's Day. Thank you so much for having me. Nandri Vanakam, merci beaucoup.
Thank you, Honorable Minister Anita Anand, for accepting our invitation today and speaking to us. As a young Tamil woman myself, it was amazing to hear about your achievements and your work in equity, diversity, and inclusion in our country. And you truly are an inspiration to women, not just in Canada, but I'm sure all over the world. Thank you again. At this time, we have a video presentation um, where we have gathered six testimonials from amazing women within our community. So let's take a look. International Women's Days celebrate the historical, political, economic, social and cultural spheres of women. The Canadian Tamil Congress would like to showcase some of the women in our community who have shined through despite many challenges to become successful and to empower others. Here are those women for you. Hi, my name is Kathika Thaparaj. I am a lawyer in downtown Toronto. To me, International Women's Day is a time to celebrate all of the badass women in my life, but also to remember that women continue to be discriminated against in our society and continue to perform more unpaid labor and more emotional labor and continue to have less physical and economic security than men and to work to do something about that. Um, in my field, I try very hard to mentor young women. And so if you're a young woman who wants to be a lawyer or wants to work in the corporate world, always call me. I will always be happy to talk to you. As I transition into my golden years, I didn't envision leading the Senior Thumb Center of Ontario, an establishment which is 36 years strong. Hi, I'm Indra Nadaraja and my career had been, and still to some effect, in linguistics. International Women's Day. The theme for International Women's Day this year is to break the bias. What better way to break the bias than to challenge the norm of the presidency status, which had been dominated by my male counterparts. Why my presidency will be coming to an end towards the end of this year, I am incredibly proud to have had the opportunity to achieve many milestones in the Senior Thermal Center. But what stands most for me is paving the path for my fellow sisters to see themselves as equals. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tanya and I'm a nurse. International Women's Day to me is about empowering women around us and celebrating everything that women have accomplished. And in my opinion, I think it should be every day, not just today. My greatest accomplishment thus far has been graduating school and starting in a career that I've been aspiring to be in for a very long time now. Um, and other than nursing, one of my passions is working out. And I personally like to weight lift because it makes me feel super strong although it's frowned upon or looked down upon for women to do, and many of us have been told not to weight lift because that's for men. But in my opinion, whatever makes us feel empowered and helps our mental health as well as our physical health is something that should be done. And we are strong, independent women, and don't let anyone ever dim your light. My name is Akshay Rathnathan. I'm 23 years old. I'm a recent graduate from Ryerson University, uh, where I constantly around negative environments and you know as a result negative speech but just to know that we get to control our future and thus control our actions um, really puts into reality the uh, importance of positive speech and you know I've had the um, opportunity to share that with the women around me and being able to empower myself and those around me as well so my greatest achievement this year has really been uh, meditation. Hello everyone. My name is Vimoshna Vijay Kumar. I am a respiratory therapist working at London Health Sciences Center. I am also a clinical instructor there that oversees respiratory therapy students during their clinical rotation. I wanted to say happy International Women's Day to everyone. It truly is an important day because it allows us to reflect on and celebrate the positive changes that have occurred to create equality as well as it gives us the opportunity to further commit ourselves to the ongoing change and battle for equal opportunity. I truly am inspired to work with 
many women who have paved the way for us and that have made their way to high, high positions in my industry, the healthcare industry. And I am super thankful to be a part of that team. Hi, my name is Mithila Chandrasegram and my pronouns are she, her. I work in learning and talent technology and I'm a first time mom currently on maternity leave. Uh, I think that making an impact and empowering women can mean and look like different things for different people. Um, it doesn't necessarily always need to be formal leadership or social media campaigns. I think the seemingly small things like the conversations we have that challenge outdated ideas about gender norms with our friends and our family and in the workplace can really go a long way. Um, the, the way that we speak to our children, the businesses we support, um, the opportunities we share and how we build each other up can really have powerful results. So happy International Women's Day. Thank you for sharing those inspiring stories. It was great to hear from women from various walks of life share their perspectives on women empowerment and achieving so much in their lives. Next, we have our highly anticipated Women in Leadership Award presentation. Canadian Tamil Congress's Women in Leadership Award is presented to someone who has achieved success in her profession, contributes time and energy to improve the quality of life of others in the community, actively assists others particularly women, in realizing their full leadership potential, demonstrates exemplary leadership, leadership skills and abilities, and is a role model and mentor to women and girls, and has inspired other young women through formal or informal mentorship. To introduce the award recipient, I would like to welcome Sahi Shankar, an engineer at Rogers Communication. She served as the president of University of Hamburg Guelph's um, Student Association and Tamil Committee for three consecutive years. Please welcome Sahi Shankar. Thank you, Swetha. Good evening, everyone. I am pleased to introduce the Canadian, sorry, the Canadian Tamil Congress 2022 Women in Leadership Award recipient. This year's award is presented to an outstanding leader and a trailblazer in the field of education, Janani Padi. Janani Padi is the principal at York Region District School Board. Janani graduated from the University of Toronto with an honor Bachelor of Science degree specialized in toxicology. She pursued a graduate certificate in education at University of Western Sydney where she graduated with distinction. Janani continued her study by completing a master of education at York University. She begins her teaching careers as a teacher of mathematics and science and worked for the Toronto District School Board and the York Region District School Board. Her journey in leadership includes the following, assistant head of chemistry, department head of science, vice principal, and currently a principal. Janani has also initiated a team of York Region District School Board teachers to teach English to Korean students, as well as to share Canadian teaching methods with Korean teachers. Janani currently serves as an instructor with the Ontario Principal Council, where she teaches the principal's qualification courses for the teachers who are ambitious to be school leaders. Janani has a strong belief that children should have access to high quality education. Janani worked with parents to navigate the school system to be strong promoters for their children. Janani's philosophy of leadership is to serve all with love and kindness. Canadian Tamil Congress is delighted to present this year's Women in Leadership Award to Janani Padi. Please join me in welcoming our award recipient, Janani Padi, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sahi, for your kind words. 
I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the Canadian Tamil Congress for this honor and recognition. This award means a lot to me. I feel privileged to be part of this evening's International Women's Day celebration and to be in the company of such distinguished and accomplished women, such as the Honorable Minister Anita Anand, the amazing panelists, moving testimonials, and talented performers. This year's theme is Break the Bias, and much credit has to be given to the Canadian Tamil Congress for the advocacy work that they do to promote and celebrate the contributions of Tamil Canadians. As a female Tamil Canadian, I know too well the biases that exist for female leaders. I am incredibly grateful for the guidance and encouragement that I have received from my parents. My sister, who is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, was also able to achieve her career goals because our parents believed in both of us. They instilled within us a confidence that we could make a difference in the world. My hope is that all Tamil Canadian families invest in the dreams of their daughters because families play a significant role in helping to break the bias so that girls can succeed and achieve their true potential. Education also plays a role in breaking the bias. And as a school principal, I wish for all girls to explore their passions and interests and to find mentors who will serve to guide them. It is wonderful that we have organizations like the Canadian Tamil Congress to help to inspire and motivate women. As we celebrate women everywhere today, and as we watch each other break through barriers that are in front of us, and as we rise and shatter glass ceilings, I encourage everyone to uplift and take other women along with them so that together we will rise. Together we will shine because our light is brighter when we shine together. Thank you once again to CTC for this honor and recognition. Congratulations, Jenny Pati, on receiving this prestigious award from the Canadian Tamil Congress. And thank you for sharing a few words with us and being an inspiration, especially to young women like myself. Thank you and congratulations once again. Up next, we have an exciting dance performance by Ramana Rakasekaran. Ramana is a graduate from Ryerson University with a Bachelor of Science and is currently pursuing her master's through the Smith School of Business at Queen's University. Ramana's dance journey began at the age of six when she was first introduced to Bharatanatyam and she has pushed her boundaries to pursue alternate dance genres as well. Hope you all enjoy this performance. <laughs> That was an amazing performance put together by Ramana Rakasekaran. Thank you. At this time, we will be moving in to our panel discussion featuring four amazing women in our community. Dr. Kanna Vela, Inita Subramaniam, Sumi Prabha, Lakshmi Jayavel, by Ramana Rakasekaran. Thank and you. let me now introduce each of them. At this time, we will be moving in to our panel discussion Featuring four amazing Kini Prabha holds extensive experience Dr. working Kana and Vela. volunteering in both Kini charitable Kana and Kana private Kana. sectors. 
She took an early retirement from the nonprofit sector and is currently pursuing her dream job as a full-time real estate agent who also assists her husband in managing a successful fashion boutique. Sumi has continuously served many boards and contributed her time to volunteer for several worthy causes, such as the President's Advisory Committee, Markham Stouffville Hospital, Markham Tamil Organization, Education, Women Assault, to name a few. She currently is voluntarily managing several virtual programs for the Markham Tamil Organization, Golden Club Seniors, and she enjoys and, and she enjoys speaking, writing, and organizing events. Welcome, Sumi Prabha. Dr. Kanna Vela completed her bachelor's degree in neuroscience at the University of Toronto Scarborough campus and medical school at the University of Toronto and residency in family medicine at the Scarborough Hospital. She served as a family physician for eight years in Pickering before transitioning to full-time emergency room physician. She is also passionate about charity work and community engagement. Dr. Kanna Vela has served on the board of the International Medical Health Organization, also known as IMHO, aimed at improving health in Sri Lanka and underprivileged countries around the world. During the last two years, Dr. Kanna Vela has been working tirelessly as a frontline emergency room physician during the pandemic. She has been involved in working at the COVID assessment centers and COVID-19 vaccination clinics as well. Welcome. Lakshmi Jayavale is a director of the retirement client segment at RBC. She has been with the bank for over 17 years in various client facing and head office roles. She is an MBA graduate of the Smith School of Business at Queen's University and has a Bachelor of Commerce from Concordia University. She is passionate about issues facing women and children, diversity and inclusion, and equity and justice. And she serves as a board, of, board member of Embrave, an agency to end violence. Thank you for joining us. Anita Subramaniam identifies as a Tamil woman treaty person on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. Inita has held various roles such as secondary and elementary educators, performance plus teachers, teacher liaison with the equity department of the York Region District School Board, and she is currently a vice president, vice principal with the YRDSB. She has been working with many Tamil community organizations and the Tamil Heritage Month initiatives since 2008. Welcome to you all. I will now be moderating this discussion with these four outstanding women who have agreed to share their perspectives on our topic today, breaking bias. We are all looking forward to hearing your perspectives, so let's jump right into it. To begin our discussion, let's start and hear from Sumi Prabha. Could you share your perspective about breaking bias and how you face the challenges in your workplace and life to get to where you are today as a woman entrepreneur. Do I start, uh, Sweta? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> good evening. Um, late 1960s, I was a child growing up and um, I love to play with my cousins and I would uh, run to their homes and I will be, uh, but my uncle would say, well, go back to the gate, come back walking like a lady. So there were several attempts and I failed miserably. And at times that uh, I will not be able to play with my cousins because I didn't know how to walk like a lady. 1970s, I was a teenager and I like to explore the world and I would ride bikes and um, climb mango trees and I would express myself. I am very loud. The society was very concerned. They blamed my parents that they were not raising a good me as a good Tamil girl. And how would you give this girl in marriage? It's always a question. 1980s, 
I went to university. Wow, finally. I thought that's my place of freedom. I can talk and be myself. And one day, a group of boys came, picked me up and threw me in the pond. At Jaffna University, ponding is for somebody who breaks the rules. So I was told over and over that I should be wearing sari and puttu and not wear bell bottoms. And that was the reason I was in the pond that day. I remember the day was so much humiliation. There were hundreds of students standing there cheering and clapping as I walked out of the dirty pond. And I became stronger within myself. I built my resilience and finished education. And I was told, oh, apply for teaching. But I sat for my SLA's exam. And I always wanted to become a air hostess. And I was told, oh, no, no, that's not the lady like thing to do. Good boys will never marry a air hostess, right? So I rebelled against everybody and I married to a man who respect me for who I am. Age 26, I came into this beautiful country. I'm supposed to come here. And I'll give you one example. I was holding a fundraising position for one of the largest charitable organization in this country, raised millions and millions of dollars. I must tell you, it's a group of seven and I'm the only person of color and a female. I have to work 10 times harder to be recognized and for my CFO to look at me and address me in the boardroom in a board meeting. I was successful, but I have to work, as I said, much harder to be recognized as a successful fundraiser. And my society, it is it's no difference. And now that I'm more wiser and mature, I will step up and do things bold and beautiful things and that's a normal average Sri Lankan wouldn't girl wouldn't or woman wouldn't do but I was always criticized and questioned and labeled if it's a man does the same thing it's perfectly all right but I'm a woman so there were times that I will give up my aspirations my dream because how far can I fight so let me remind you I know I, my time is very limited Mahakavi Bharati had talked about or he fought for gender inequality Hundred years later, we are celebrating International Women's Day today and the theme is break the bias. So hundreds of years later, we are still struggling with the same issues. So who do we hold responsible? Is it you? Is it me? Or is it the society? I think we should all come together and create an environment that is free of bias, stereotypes, discrimination, and we should create or make our homes, villages, societies, and in this world, a better place for all our young girls and women. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And like you mentioned, even a hundred years later, we're still in this theme of, yes, we are celebrating International Women's Day, but the theme is still breaking that bias. And, that is something the world is still striving towards. Um, so thank you again, Sumi Prabha, for sharing your story and how you are, where, how you got to where you are today. Now I would like to introduce Kannavela, Dr. Kannavela, to say a few words and share her story about breaking bias and share how you've gotten to where you are today, especially as a woman of color in the Canadian healthcare system. Um, and facing the challenges that you have faced. So can we bring up Dr. Kannavela? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, watching the speeches and the discussion here and uh, I'm happy to be part of it as well um, and share my little um, thoughts and personal experiences and hopefully we'll um, inspire um, some women here today. Um, so being a female coming from a first generation immigrant ethnic minority um, poses its own unique challenges. Um, there's a huge expectation and push to maintain our cultural identity and often um, that's aligned with very traditional roles um, when it comes to being a female. Um, we're expected to be quiet and respectful and, and obedient and to not challenge authority. And when a female sp speaks up, um, it's looked at on as someone who is too talkative or too bossy 
or um, is someone that's not taken seriously. Um, but uh, when a male does the same thing, uh, then it's regarded as assertive and brave. So um, with respect to my own personal experiences, um, when I was in grade school, uh, I was bullied by a boy. He would follow me home from school uh, and beat me up and then I would go home crying. Um, my parents um, you know, took this to the school and unfortunately nothing much was done about it. So um, he, my parents decided to enroll me in martial arts because they wanted me to, to gain some self-confidence and be able to defend myself. Um, so that was sort of the very first, my first experience of sort of breaking bias because it's not something, martial arts is not something traditionally that um, a female would do. Um, or enroll in. And I think that was a turning point in my life where um, I was able to um, see that females can be, don't have to be vulnerable, they can be strong, um, they can speak up, they can defend themselves. And so, um, in fact, as I got went through my, my uh, martial arts training, I decided um, that I wanted to um, become a martial arts instructor. So I started teaching karate um, to hopefully give other um, young children, including uh, young girls, the same sort of confidence that I, re I received through karate. And I feel like this opened the door for other opportunities in leadership and mentoring um, just from the skills that I learned from my martial arts training and teaching. Um, as I went through my educational training, I was fortunate enough uh, that although I came from a, a very traditional family, so my father worked full time and he was the breadwinner in our family and my mom stayed home to take care of us um, and do the household chores. Um, it wasn't something that was expected from me. Uh, and instead of sort of helping my mom and doing those traditional chores and, and, and uh, things at home, I would sneak downstairs and I would do house renovations with my dad or tinker on the computer with him when he was teaching, um, giving computer um, uh, lessons to other people. So um, I think it's important to recognize that breaking these biases starts at home, just like Miss Miss Puthy had mentioned, and it can start at a very young age, and it can shape uh, a young girl's um, confidence in themselves and how and how they perceive themselves and how um, they can impact how that can impact their future. Um, you might wonder why after um, Swetha's introduction about my medical career and accomplishments that I'm talking about like karate, teaching karate and, and house renovations, but um, it's, it's so important to recognize that um, it's these non-traditional things that you teach girls at a young age that can move them forward to um, be able to, in their adult lives, um, challenge those, those biases. Um, even medicine, I still face many challenges as a female physician. Um, to this day, patients, security guards, police officers, and other staff members still call me nurse or anything else but doctor. Um, they don't. They don't think that I'm a doctor. So um, I still have to continue to speak up about that and continue to introduce myself as Dr. Vela because um, it's just not something that is like inherently, it's a bias, that's a bias too. Um, and so um, these are all important things that we have to continue to speak up about because if we don't, no one else will. And of recent in medicine, there's actually a very interesting study that got published in a Canadian medical journal um, that showed that female, so female physicians um, have a lower day, lower rate of death um, and less complications. So patients do better if they're operated on by a female surgeon than their male counterparts. So it just goes to show, and females have only been surgeons for a very short period of time. Um, it's not, uh, it's, we've only been in medicine for a short period of time and um, surgery is a very male dominated career. Uh, but just in this short period of time that there's been more female surgeons, it's clear in a medical journal, a Canadian medical journal that is published that patients do better if they're operated on by a female uh, physician. So pr we're pretty much better at everything, including uh, career, not just home, uh, than our male counterparts. So I think that's important to recognize and hopefully events like this and as people move forward um, in the future, we're gonna be able to appreciate that more. Um, as a mother myself, I still struggle with balancing with the guilt of not meeting motherly stereotypes um, that society has put on us. Um, I've made many changes and sacrifices to my own career to be a more present 
um, and involved mother to my daughters. But I also try to balance that with maintaining my career goals and passions. And I think that's really important that we always continue to fight for that. Um, there's a lot of guilt um, when I'm when I have a really great week where I'm working a lot and doing a lot of things and advocacy for my patients and, um, you know, being involved in leadership at the hospital. Um, then I get I feel a lot of guilt that I'm not present as I could be at home or I'm not as good of a mother. Um, but then when I'm involved more at home and take time off and try and be more present with my daughters, then I have a lot of guilt that I'm not um meeting my expectations at work, or I'm not being a good doctor, I'm not being a good uh, colleague to my, um, to, to my uh, colleagues at the hospital. So um, it's, it's an ongoing struggle that we all face. It's challenges that are unique to women. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's always something that we should strive to be better at to, to, to balance. Um, so those are, those are some of my experiences that I wanted to share. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Kanavela, for sharing your story. And as you mentioned earlier on in your um, in your speech that it really does start at home and it's, you know, you have your education, you have all of that, but it what you really learn outside of that and the skills that you get instilled within you at home is really where your confidence builds as a woman. And especially as a young woman, I can say that your speech today truly did inspire me and I'm sure it inspired everyone watching today as well. So thank you again. Um, now I would like to introduce um, Lakshmi Jayavel to share your story and your perspective on breaking bias. And as someone who is in corporate services, I am as well now as a young, um, as a young MBA candidate. Um, you, I'm sure, are inspirational to many people. So we would love to hear your story today. Hi, Sweda and fellow panelists. Thank you very much for having me. Um, when I think about your question, I think it's threefold for me. So I'm in banking. I started my career in Montreal in retail banking. And many of the roles that I see were in core finance and strategy, which were in Toronto. And I struggle at first with the thought of making the move to another city. You know, would my parents be okay with it? Can I make it on my own financially? What if it didn't work out? And I quickly realized that my only limit is the limit that I set for myself. So I researched and I networked, and it was critical for me to really find out what I really wanted for myself and seek advice from various individuals with different perspectives to help me make that decision. And in some of those conversations, gender biases did surface. I've heard you know, male colleagues note the long hours in a particular division, for example, and the challenges working moms had. And it was frustrating because you know, at the time, I wasn't even seeing anyone. I had no plans of getting married, nor of having any children. And fast forward to today, I've had progressive career growth, held a very variety of roles uh, with enterprise level exposure and now in the client segment. And I could confidently say that the bank has been good to me, but I've also been good to the bank. And, you know, every time I wanted to try something new or gain exposure to a different area that I didn't have expertise in, the bank opened those doors. And I think that's a function of the organization's culture, me doing good work, demonstrating leadership and collaboration and communicating what I wanted to do next. So you need to advocate for yourself. And, and secondly, I think I've become you know, more conscious and really purposeful in the language that I use both in the workplace and in my social and family life. So whether unconscious or not, biases make it different, make it really difficult for women to advance. And I actively try to use, you know, gender non-conforming language. So for example, once I did have my first child and I took leave, my out of office message didn't say that I was on maternity leave, but that I was on parental leave. And you will not hear me say in a professional setting that I'm a, a, a mom, but that I'm a parent. And you know, if for whatever reason, if, if I can't do a meeting from 4.30 to 5.30 because I'm on school pickup that day, I'll just tell my colleagues that I have a hard stop at 5 p.m. Because the details are irrelevant and my contribution to the project will not be negatively impacted. I think, unfortunately, some still assume that being a mom can make you less dedicated or less focused at work. Whereas I truly believe that, you know, being a parent makes you actually more effective at work. I am way better at prioritizing my time. 
Um, I could manage the needs of multiple stakeholders at home and in the office, and I'm much better at nav navigating ambiguity. And, and I think thirdly, like, like many uh, of the panelists have mentioned, I think, you know, if we truly want to break the bias, you know, I, I need to instill the values of equity both in the workplace and at home. And I stand by my inner activist who, who rages inside when I hear non-inclusive, non-equitable, gender, cultural, or orientation-related language. And I'll address the comment in a calm and respectful manner, of course, but to raise awareness and hopefully break that cycle of bias. Thank you, Lakshmi Jayali, for sharing that story with us. And I think what you said was absolutely correct. And using gender conforming language is sometimes where it really starts. And I think you have inspired many today who are listening to you and who are able to reflect on how they um, communicate um, in terms of gender equity and equality. Um, so thank you again for sharing that with us today. I would now like to introduce Inita Subramaniam to share her perspective and her story on how she has broken bias as an educator um, in Canada. So what to you, Anita. Thank you, welcome everyone. Um, I'll be quite fast, you know, I uh, have three minutes. Uh, for me, I, I want to start by also, as the other panelists said, thank my parents for all that they've done so that I can be who I am today. And thank my parents for starting me on the journey of breaking the bias the day I was born. I have not, they have not ever made me feel that I am, you know, uh, because of a woman, uh, I have to be this way or that way. Um, I came into Turtle Island, um, uh, or, you know, known as Canada, um, when I was 14 years of age. So I did come from the wharf as a refugee. And it was how they raised me uh, in Ulam as well as here. So I, you know, I'm very appreciative of how my dad, um, you know, um, raised me to be this strong, strong Ulam Tamil woman, right? And um, uh, as I was growing up, I didn't, my family didn't uh, own a car when I was, we were, uh, when I was a student, my dad worked three shifts, three different jobs. And um, uh, when it was time for me to, um, uh, age of 16, uh, by age 17, I got a job and I heard other people, um, relatives saying, oh, you're letting her go to work. And my dad was like, I'm, I don't own her. So how can I let her go to work? She wants to go to work. She can go to work. Right. So uh, I completed high school working as well as studying. And then that, uh, you know, I learned so much Um that work environment taught me so much. So I encourage our youth, especially our self-identified female folks to, you know, go and get jobs, be involved and, uh, you know, um, embrace that um, independence, right? And um, uh, throughout university, I took uh, learned to take the subway, the uh, RT, bus, I went downtown from Scarborough. I, again, family didn't own a car. So I learned, uh, you know, to take all of these things on my own. I volunteered at Women's College Hospital, um, uh, Mount Sinai. All of this was on my, you know, I went, put the applications, volunteered, right? Wanted to experience different things. So I, I again, for the youth, you know, when, you, when you're high school, when you, it's time for volunteering, don't always go back to your elementary school, burst the bubble, right? Break that and go and find things that you enjoy. And that's how you know if that's, where you want to go, right? And uh, learn to take all of these public transport and things that they always find, you know, of uh, um, parents uh, driving them here and there at home. When you're ready and you're old enough, to learn to take all these public transport pieces, learn to take the bus, the subway, the RT, whatever it is, right? I used to, my four years of university, I worked at um, Centre Island uh, from May till end of Labor Day, right? And um, uh, some shifts, uh, I would end at 11.30 p.m. By the time I got home, it was 12.30 a.m., right? And always people saying, oh, she's coming so late. Do you know what she's doing? And my dad would be like, yeah, she's working. <laughs> you know, she's the, she's paying for a university, right? So it's, um, you know, the, the biases came from outsiders. And uh, that's where we need to, like, you know, build those walls, build those uh, walls to be able to, you know, uh, no, this is my path. This is my, uh, you know, way I want to go. And, you know, let off those negativity bounce off you like those ping pong balls, right? And um, 
I went to Sydney, Australia to complete my teacher's degree and I lived there for about six years, worked there again on my own <laughs> right after graduation. And again, the comments of, oh my gosh, you're letting her go so far away on her own, <laughs> right? And she's living there now and she has her own place. And that's where I learned uh, again, you know, like Dr. Kana said, I learned uh, plumbing, paying the bills uh, to get, pay, like, get a home, to pay insurance, to to drive on my own. Like I purchased a car uh, in Sydney, you can buy a car. The number plate comes with the car. I didn't know how to drive. So from 2 a.m. to um, you know um, uh, 3 a.m., once I get better from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., I graduated myself to daylight time, right? I learned uh, how to change um, tiles with my landlord To So all of these things I learned, uh, you know, because of that opportunity of going and living Way on the other side of you know canada mm -hmm. and uh, uh and then when i came back i went uh, up north to an indigenous community in northern ontario again the same comments of wow she's going away somewhere far by herself i learned to embrace my identity and my many intersectionalities when i uh, lived and worked and uh, collaborated and, and broke bread with the indigenous community uh, in ibamatung and um, those years is where i opened it opened up my eyes and i became more uh, more tamil there and when i came back to toronto is when i learned to um, you know, embrace my Tamilness, and I learned to. Um, I over got involved in many of the uh, Tamil organizations. Again, uh, you know, built my networks, built my uh, people that I can go and uh, get assistance when I need, uh, who I can reach out to for advice, for suggestions. And I think for the youth, um, you know, the stereotypes and the biases will always be there, right? As a Tamil uh, a woman. Uh, uh, as a cisgender woman, I mean, I always think of, you know, um, all the many intersectionalities I carry. And as a, an administrator now, you know, um, I had questions from parents who said, oh, really? You are the new vice principal, right? Uh, so the, those things will always be there. It's, it's how uh, I am going to navigate those situations and how I'm going to make sure that, as Dr. Kana said, that I establish that, yes, this I am the new vice principal for your school. And uh, it's important for the Tamil uh, women, female identified students and all female identified students and our trans women and our non-binary folks to see that they have a voice and that they can be those leaders that, uh, you know, embrace their identity and we don't have to shorten our names. We do not have to change, um, you know, who we are to uh, progress, to be successful, to be who we can be and who to be who we want to be, right? So uh, that is my little piece for um, other youth out there. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think your unfiltered and realistic um, advice is much needed to be heard. And thank you again for sharing that with us today. Um, I would like to give the floor, open the floor up to all the panelists once again to give to share their final words and their thoughts. So um, let's start with Lakshmi Jayavail. Do you have any final words of advice for young aspiring women, especially? Sure, I, you know, I think I'm gonna regurgitate what I said and, and just really um, emphasize the fact that your only limit is really the limit that you set for yourself. You know, get out there and network and seek advice and be your own advocate and hopefully you'll pick up some mentors and sponsors along the way. And challenge biases when you hear them, open up a conversation and help others unpack where those biases are from. Because if, if we don't take action, we're, we, we can evolve from it. Right, thank you. Um, opening it up to Inita Subramaniam to share your final thoughts. Uh, I like how um, um, the, um, our guest speaker shared about, uh, you know, our youth, uh, Tamil youth, our female self, identified female youths to be part of uh, law enforcement, to be part of, uh, you know, explore those pieces, right? Don't let stereotypes and assumptions uh, prevent you from going into Royal Military College or to 
you know, to um, join the police force, right? Go and explore those things. Be that um, example of a person that the next generation will be like, I want to go to RMC. I want to be that um, police chief out there so that we can bring that a female police chief to be our next guest speaker here, right? So go, go, you know, get what you want. Go reach for those um, stars, you know, those cliche, but uh, don't change who you are on the way and do not let others dictate who you can or who you should be. You are who you are and you know it. You do not need anybody to tell you who you are. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Canavela? your final thoughts and any advice that you have for young women? Um, so just sort of reiterate what myself and the other panelists were saying is, um, you know, try to keep um, doing those things outside of societal expectations in order to break those biases. Um, recognize that it happens at a very young age. Um, continue to speak up um, when you're not treated equally or fairly and uh, throw away the guilt. Great, thank you. And finally, Sumi Prabha, if you have any final words and young for and any advice for young aspiring women. Yes. Um, when pandemic hit, I turned sixty, and then I all of a sudden realized my I have a my bucket list is so long, and I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to write a novel, and I want to do this, and I have not done so many things in my life and then I realized that you know I was so busy being a good mother, daughter and a wife and a mother and don't get me wrong there's a beautiful responsibilities that I enjoy very much however what I did not do is and focus to do things for myself what will really make me feel good what will really make make my life more rich and more meaningful so what I want to tell the youngsters is please first now explore yourself who you are what are your strengths you know what would you like to do and do not wait until my age and regret for things that you know maybe i could have done this or i could have done that so do it now talk to your parents talk to your grandparents and and be yourself like everybody else said and no regrets for later on but do it right now the things that you want to do and make your life so beautiful and be yourself that's all i wanted to say that was amazing. Thank you so much to all four of our panelists today for sharing your stories and your perspectives. Um, so thank you again. And our community is lucky to have aspiring and inspiring women like you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, to wrap up the evening on a musical note, we have a beautiful instrumental performance from Sahitya Rajat, student of Jayanti Ratnakumar's Runalayam School of Music. Here's her performance.
That was a beautiful performance. Thank you, Sahitya. And this performance concludes our International Women's Day celebration 2022. I would like to take this time to thank our speakers, panelists, Minister Honorable Anita Anand, our event sponsor, Sassi Netting from AGA Beauty Learning Academy and Spa. And finally, thank you to all of you for joining us today in celebrating women. And thank you to everyone who works towards gender equality and breaking the bias for a successful tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you all at our next event. So thank you and hope you all have a great night.